guy with the microphone. I didn't call you up. All right. So I'm going to turn over the microphone to you. Uh, when we see Chris and, and everybody else come in, I'll get them up here in the front of the room with you as well. Uh, I'll turn the mic over to Zach. And like I said, if you have any questions, feel free. You can come up, and it can be directed to any of them. Feel free to come up to this microphone right over here and ask questions, or it's going to be an incredibly short Q&A panel. And we'll do this for about 20, 25 minutes. Here he is. You guys. You guys had fun last night? This isn't really one of our more demonic locations. You know, this is more like not entry level, but definitely is not a location to where we, it's some of the other ones that we've been. Did anybody go to our Mansfield Reformatory? I know you guys have. How was your, yeah, we won't. Okay, we won't talk. <laughs> Did anybody have experiences last night? One? Am I the only one? <laughs> no, I think some people still want to talk about it. What happened? Where were you? I was at the, well, the Market Theater and the Butterworth building, but I'm on, well, first of all, she got touched on the knee in the projector room, but I, I got to see with my stepdad on the uh, shack path. Oh, yeah? The voice came through on that? Yeah. How many of you investigated last night? How many? All right. Which do you think was more active by show of hands? The Butterworth building? The theater. The theater. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? I did too. Uh, we had a lot of stuff happen last night. Mark and Debbie. You weren't at the Butterworth building. I know, but I've investigated before. And we didn't get too much, you know, we, we got some evidence there. We got some good stuff. We got a, a very weird photo up in the fourth floor that we cannot um, figure out. We actually had Mark and Debbie analyze it for us. And then we had, uh, we've got some EVPs there. We got a really good EVP that had something to do with the photo and kind of a deep voice. but. You know, we've done a lot of investigations with Mark and Debbie before, um, a lot. Hey, Zach, let me bring them up real quick. We've got Billy from the Ghost Adventures, the Evidence Analyst Review. Expert is with us now. Chris Fleming also is going to be joining up for the panel, so you can direct questions to him. And let's not forget our other speaker and uh, also the host of your Ghost Box, Mercedes. Come on up here, Mercedes. But real quick, before we get to your, quick, your question, um, Mark and Debbie, you guys, what do you think about the EVP at the market uh, theater. You know, we we didn't really get a chance to, to do too well. Actually, no, recording in the back area where the more dark stuff was happening. We were out in the theater area, and it was really we were getting good EVP, with, but it was all like kind of goody two shoes EVP, like I love you and I love you. And the only thing I said the only person they didn't like was Zach when he came out. Uh, you know, but yet. Yeah, the back part, Zach spent the time in, and it was a lot darker than it was up front. But the EVP we were getting up front, I mean, we were getting some clear things. The only negative thing that happened was Aaron. Uh, Aaron was seeing something to the left, and about four or five other people saw it, and then as soon as he saw it, he started getting really nauseous. And I went up to it and put a rim on it, in case y'all saw it again, but I didn't want to show someone there. That's what happened. Yeah. And then as soon as he walked out of the room, we played back what we were recording, and it said, uh, Aaron's sick, there's no hope. <laughs> so, uh, so quickly, though, for the amount of EVP that we had, the amount of words, it was like eight, ten words, and they were clear. And I think anybody that was there last night, I don't know if you're draining my voice, too, but... Anybody that was there last night got eight, ten words very clear, and they rolled out. And I think it's awesome. And we've been with you guys in some very active places, and we haven't gotten that much EVP. Oh, wow. There was a lot, and it was nonstop. And it started right from the first time. Yeah. Right, right. It was crazy, unexpected. You know. Um, do you? Are you have our first question? Sure. Oh my God. <laughs> well, just say the name of who you want to answer your question, anybody up here, and then we'll answer it. Well, anyone who this applies to you. I was just kind of curious about if you guys listen to music before, like if that helps you, and maybe what kind of music you listen to before to get hyped up. <laughs> I do. I mean, music, uh, to me, is a big part of my life, you know, and it's something that can manipulate your emotions, like what spirits can do. So whenever I go to a place, like uh, somebody was asking me about the La Parisma mission, I was like listening to some Indian music, not from India, but like, you know, like that stuff. And um, so I'll listen to, well, I went to Louisiana, you know, I listened to bluegrass music, 
You know, I always try and get in that theme to get in their mindset, you know, maybe. Would you listen to Nirvana here? Nirvana? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little Dave Matthews fan. Yeah, of course. The worst part is, is his headphones are so loud, Nick and I have to hear it too. <laughs> I don't like music. Yeah. <laughs> That's my highway to hell, ACDC. <laughs> ACDC, Aaron Hodges, since 1979. Um, I still listen to your music all the time. But I think if you want to meditate and stuff, I'll listen to like Enigma, Delirium, you know, Conjure One, which has kind of got a nice ambient beat and it's got some spiritual elements to it, you know? But uh, to get going, yeah, ACDC. <laughs> oh, John? I'm the historian, I read books. <laughs> I do listen to music, but uh, it's not important what I listen to. I listen to everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything. Just put something to get you in the mood, you know? Definitely. <laughs> My darling, I. <laughs> no, I, I basically have to listen to Debbie, so. <laughs> I've never been after 23 years, a lot of it's not music to my ears. So. I also plan on listening to you. Oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Um, yeah, I have a question for the whole panel, but maybe mostly Chris or Kelly. It's a protection question. Um, I'm looking into getting more involved with this, but I'm a little worried about having a family at home, especially an eight-year-old son that I don't want to be bringing stuff home to. So what do you recommend? I mean, is it safe for me to be doing something like this and coming home to my child? There are so many variables, so many factors. You know, what's your belief system? What do you do around the house? You know, what is your child? Like I stated last night, you know, you can put a white light around everybody and you can pray. protect yourself and imply that you're protecting everybody in the circle, but you can, Everybody has free will, they have their own choice. Why don't we do this stuff, nothing's gonna affect me. And it might not affect them. Someone might be completely terrified, going, okay, this is what I like, but I'm scared, I'm terrified, and then, you know, we're gonna get hurt, you know? I mean, that can happen. So, there is no definite answer. I'm sorry. And anybody that says there is, and they're like, well, I'm gonna protect you, like, I did a seance once, dead famous, and the psychic goes, well, Chris didn't protect everybody in the circle, so I have to protect them. Well, then, my God, here's some water. Walk on this water for me. It's like, come on. You know, put the, anyone that has an ego in the stadium is just stay away from them. You know, they, they just don't have that power. But the thing is, is your intent. You know, your pure intent and your belief. That is the most powerful thing. I mean, and if you put your belief just in an object or something like that, then you're releasing your faith and belief from yourself and putting it somewhere else. Because if someone removes that object, what do you have left? It has to be with inside. You know, it has to remain with inside of you. That's what you don't want allowed to be taken away. Kelly, you want to say anything? How old, how old is, are your children? Uh, just one son, he's eight. One son, he's eight. Um, uh, I, I second everything he said. <laughs> but also, I was going to say, um, while they're uh, under 18, they're pretty much under your blanket of protection. So anytime you surround them in life, you're able to shield them. Think of that. It's actually pretty much to 16, not 18, but uh, that, that would be my best suggestion. Use any of the shielding techniques, but you can do it for them because they aren't as likely to do it for themselves. Especially the, the, the bubble of light. That's a great way to go. That's oh, what Taught me a lot of things. 
But in one instance, my mom and I were doing it, all of a sudden I started levitating, three, about three, four feet off of the chair. All my pajamas was going like this. I was becoming possessed, all right? My hair was blowing everything, and I'm like, Ma! And then, you know, the board's like this at this point. She started praying and everything, and I came down and went right through me. If it wasn't for my faith, my mom's prayers, and I was an altar boy at the time, by the way, that if that wasn't within me, and within my mom, then I would have become possessed. I would have been a little boy who's in some movie today, okay? <laughs> you know, that would have happened. They're, it's not a, it's a tool, and what they've told me is this, Chris, angels and high-level spirits are busy, okay? This is a game that they don't have time for. They don't sit around going, okay, this is my talk, this is Luigi Luigi board, we get the call yet? No, they get the call. No, <laughs> you've got low-level spirits going, you got low-level spirits going, well, what am I going to do? Who am I going to mess with? Oh, hello, you know, they're going to mess with people with that. Majority will be low-level entities, so avoid it. Hi, this is for uh, Zach, Aaron, and Jeff. And uh, I was wondering, how do you gain access to these really great haunted sites that you visit and investigate? Who opens the doors for you, and how do you make the connections? I beg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's funny. Uh, we just shot in Salem in October, and um, you know, it sometimes places roll out the red carpet for us. They're excited to have ghost adventures there. Uh, in other cases, it's really you know a back and forth. Um, it, but like Witch House in Salem, no show had ever been in there. They were pretty down on, on you know ghost groups in general. I had to go before the town board. Oh yeah. <laughs> like for yeah, it was it was the craziest thing. I didn't anticipate oh. being beat up by uh, an selectman. How do you present yourself? But we won. Yeah. <laughs> how do you present yourself like really seriously? Like, yeah. This is a show of entertainment. How do you present? It, 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 here's the truth, and here's the approach. I always tell them. Hey, number one, especially historic sites, uh, ghosts are an opportunity to teach history. And we, a ghost show without setting the stage historically first is nothing. Like you, you, we have to put them on a stage, so we have to right. tell the story of what took place at that location. We have to give it its just due, its respect, uh, before the guys go in. And so places that are passionate about teaching, I say, well, this is one way to teach, and, and a, a really good way, too. I mean, if it gets people in the door and gets people learning, why not? Sure. And, and that usually, it's the truth, and it works. So you reflect the different facets and dimensions and aspects of it all and present it accordingly. Yeah, if you've seen the show, it's all, any show, it's always putting that location in a historical context first. This is what happened here. This is what took place. This is where history left a mark. And now we're going to go look for what might still be lurking. Right. Pam, no, you don't We are, yeah, no, actually. <laughs> no, yeah, other, other shows aren't doing that. And uh, I think it's you're missing most of the story, you know? Sure. I mean, you gotta do that, otherwise it's like, oh, we heard this place is haunted, let's just go in. I agree. You know, I mean, well, what do you know when you find something, you know? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, All right, we're the, we're the first people, we're the first people. You got a list too. Hello. Hi there. My name is Sheila, long-time viewer, first-time hunter. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, my question is for Zach and Aaron um, about Preston Castle, um, the episode. Um, when Nick is downstairs and he gets the flowers and comes Nick back. Is downstairs. <laughs> Nick. Okay. I don't know. Oh, I missed that part of the episode. <laughs> we can talk about that, Aaron. Uh, so when he goes to get the flowers and then he gets pinched and he says there's somebody there behind him, is that a little boy or just the way that the light hits? Or um, I don't remember a shadow. You might have looked at, you know, a lot of times our shadows can, you know, whoop, a little boy. Wouldn't... Yeah. He turns around and in the doorway there's a little boy. Or it looks like. Did we acknowledge it at all? No. We didn't. So. Uh, well, I mean, we have been known to miss stuff, but sometimes if it is that, we could find, you know, we did find an explanation for it, then we won't present it. But I don't know. A lot of times, like when he was at Tombstone, you know what I mean? We missed this white, like, mist figure kind of move. It was like, a, remember that? We addressed it in the follow-up. 
And it was for somebody like you that picked up on it. It was like a torso with an arm that looked like it was standing there. Right. And then when Aaron got up, it kind of like moved and walked away. I saw my violator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we'll go back and check it out, though. Oh, no, no. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi, um, my question is for whomever. Um, I was just wondering, I know children and animals are so much more sensitive to the presence of spirit and what do you guys think happens to us as, as we age that makes it so that we're not as sensitive to what's going on as, as kids are? Why can kids see things that we can't? Uh, from Psychic Kids, here is Chris Fleming. <laughs> Well, uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's a simple answer to that is, you know, when you're a child, you don't have all these burdens and things you bogged down with, you know, homework, bills to pay, you know, wife man mentioned, just kidding. Um, you know, all, <laughs> how are Chris compel you? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. The thing is, you don't have all these things, these distractions. Okay. When you're a kid, you're open-minded to everything. I mean, you ever see a kid run right in the wall and start laughing? You know, I've seen kids do that. <laughs> what are you doing? They don't know that it hurts. <laughs> they're open to all this stuff. So they're more sensitive to seeing things because no one's told them that it does not exist. All right. When someone starts instilling certain beliefs on you, think about it this way. No kid is born racist. All right. Someone imposes that upon them. All right. Same thing with ghosts and spirits. Mind you, it's all over the place. 
I, I have just some really sick, twisted dreams. Um, I, I have dreams a lot about spirits, about ghosts, a lot of them. And uh, a lot of them I'm very, very scared, actually. Um, and a lot of these dreams happen right after lockdowns, the night after and the next night after that, and then it seems to go away. And then I'm just dreaming about stupid, weird shit. <laughs> My dreams are crazy, and uh, they usually have to do with the devil and vampires, and it's almost like a history lesson in my dreams, so I started writing them down, and I have actually an artist who's painting my nightmares, and it's, uh, I'm writing all about it, and it's, it's pretty cool, it's coming out, but uh, yeah, so I just document it now, everything I can, and then show you guys eventually. You're like, what's he going to say? I actually have something to say about this. As a dad, like driving in a car and then put his head out the window for air examination. <laughs> I actually, from the time I was three or four, had night terrors almost every single night. Not every night. And I sleepwalk, end up in the driveway in the morning, the backyard. It, it was a real problem. And it was always the same dream. Up until I was about 12, uh, someone was always trying to kill me. There was always someone. I would wake up and I would think I was awake, but I wasn't. I was hallucinating. I would, I would uh, see people standing behind the curtains with a shotgun. Scary stuff. This is why I asked my son about this. These three Your son has night terrors? Three. Well, if anyone here has ever had night terrors, it's, it seems like reality. Like you wake up screaming or whatever. The night terrors went away. Um, but I'm one of the type of people that go into a deep sleep. And it's usually the people that sleep very deeply and, and they don't have the sleep paralysis and anything. Cause you can't sleepwalk if you're paralyzed, but that, I don't know. I don't quite understand it, but I don't have it anymore. I'd say they'll, they'll go away, okay. hopefully. <laughs> you don't want to know what I dream about. <laughs> <laughs> um, ask any of my friends growing up and even today, it's, I have the most vivid dreams, most detailed. If I could turn them into movies, I'd be a millionaire. But, uh, you know, a lot of them is just, I'm a superhero. Like, I have all the abilities of the X-Men, that type of stuff. Some of the dreams is a completely different industry that I'm like, no. But um, some stuff is just crazy, you know? The dreams that come true. Uh, you know, things that you're not living out, such as being on stage with ACDC performing. You know, that type of stuff. So. I really believe that there's a library out there that we all access in our dreams. So I've kept a journal since I was 19. And from repeated dreams, I was actually able to find an ancestor of mine because I dreamt about an island in England and a very certain type of hunting tool. And I had a person actually research that tool and found a great relative of mine that was actually from that area. So keeping a, a dream journal, can, I, I believe your DNA has all that memory as well as your eye color and your hair color. It can be a way to connect with your, your ancestors. Does anybody out there have dreams about relatives of the past? Isn't that weird? Can you dream about them? I have that a lot. My stepmother and my dad's friend and my grandfather, just on my father's side. And it's weird because they talk to you and it's very vivid. And sometimes in my dream, I realize that they're already dead. And I'm like, wow, I'm talking to them. That's all I'm talking about. Can I actually add something to that, Zach? Because I have that with my stepdad and like it'll be like a normal dream and then all of a sudden he'll emerge from like a dark corner and it's not a dream anymore. It's like all of a sudden it shifts a little bit and it seems a little bit more real and he says something to me. So yeah, no, yeah. Dreams are just so weird, you know what I mean? Especially when they come into the dream and you don't know when that's gonna happen, you know? You don't know what night it's gonna be and what that confrontation is all about. It's just weird. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a good relationship with my stepmother at all, very bad. And she still comes into my dreams and it's just, it's strange, it's very weird. All right, okay, are we good? Thank you. Jeff, Jeff, as an author, maybe you could get together on a book like an Encyclopedia of Nightmares. I believe I already did that. Oh, that's right, Jeff has a book called the Encyclopedia of Nightmares, which is available at Amazon.com. Where is it at? What website? I went to that one. What, what is it again? It's that funny. You go to darknessradio.com. You can have a link to Amazon.com and darknessradio.com. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, of course, Ghost Adventures is my favorite ghost hunting show album. So I guess this question is going to be Aaron Zachary. Um, 
I know it's two separate networks, but my friend came up with a brilliant idea and I thought it'd be kind of fun. On April Fools, you guys should either have a crossover or you guys should act like ghost hunters and they should act like you. Have you ever talked with Let's them? Let's let Zori answer that. Zori, what do you think about that? No, stay the way you are. No, I agree. Watching you guys like ghost hunting with friends. Hey, there's a challenge out there, maybe. We won't back down. And have you ever talked to them? Uh, no, to them? I haven't. I've met a couple of them, and that was about it, you know. Okay. Yeah, don't let it rub off on you. That's my birthday, so I will not oh, do anything right. on that. <laughs> 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 that is April Fool's Day. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Thank you, God. <laughs> <laughs> Would you talk to them about the Ghost Hunters? Yeah. Hi, again. Um, okay, so let's say hypothetically, all of the skeptics are completely convinced, everyone knows ghosts are real, everyone believes it, and people start addressing the problems that they have no matter what. What do you do? Like, what's your next step? Do you continue like talking to them, or do you go out and do something else? Like, become a rock star in ACP or something? I don't know. I think that's the end times. <laughs> I don't know. I do. When it all is accepted, I think uh, that's when all hell breaks loose. I don't know. Well, it's all like outlaws and convicts. Everybody knows they exist, right? And they all run from their, uh, what do you call that? Their bail bondsmen. But dog bounty hunters are still out there chasing them, right? <laughs> There's still demons out there or bad spirits. That's what I like to go after. So. You know, actually, something I've been saying for years is that, uh, you know, for, for a long time, all of us really have been talking about this stuff as reality. You know, we, we've researched it, we've had our own experiences, and at some point, you stop trying to convince others, because I look at it this way, Catholicism has a billion members worldwide, and, and billions of dollars and tons of real estate, and they've yet to get 100% market share. What chance do we have? <laughs> Just saying. So, I mean, you, you do this for yourself, and, and other people find something in it, and, and get something from it, and that's okay. You know, we don't have to prove it to everyone. Thank you. All right, my question is for everybody. How do you guys feel, you know, hunting the paranormal, you know, it's one thing you guys go and take a couple days, go do a job or a hunt. How do you deal with that when you get home, when the stuff follows you home, or when you start hearing things, seeing things at your home? <laughs> I try dealing with it, and every time I dealt with it, it got worse. So then I just stop dealing with it. And so it still happens, but I don't know. I figure when it's all over, I'll get a huge ass blessing and maybe sit in church for a week. <laughs> maybe I'll uh, swim in the holy water for a couple days. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't go to church. Uh, I, I, I go to church once and they kind of want me out of there. And I was like, what? yeah. I got my own issues with that, but uh, yeah. Does it scare you guys more? Like, when you're home in like your comfort zone, and it really used to. You know, you're going on a hunt. You, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the stuff. Yeah. Sitting at home watching TV, or you're in your shower, or, you know, doing whatever. It's weird because for me, I can feel it. You know, when I go out on a lockdown, I can measure, you know, how intense it was and what my body picked up on. You know what I mean? And what I feel I came into contact with uh, deeply, not just hearing something, seeing something, something where. I mentally got kind of weird. Um, and when I get home, um, it, it's just really, really weird. I can tell when there's something in my house with me. I can tell. And sometimes it gets really loud. It starts playing tricks on me. And uh, it, it, for me, it lasts anywhere from two days up to two weeks. Yeah, my old place is really insane. But I like it. I, I enjoy it. I just, I, I just, I love it. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. I just love it. I think it's cool. It is last place. Oh, yeah. oh my god! I feel so sorry for the person who's in there. Yeah. <laughs> for for me, I notice it too when I get home. Some places, not all places, but maybe for about two days, three days, things are going on. But I don't, I don't pay attention to it. Just, I, I ignore it. Kind of like a, a kid that's nagging you. And if you eventually don't, you know, give them attention, they'll go away. They do, they go so away. But the ones that do stay, I mean, if I actually feel I need to, I'll pray. I mean, I pray every night when I go to bed. I think
think it's just you know your own personal protection. It's what your belief system is, whatever that may be. Um, you can protect yourself. It's, he couldn't have said it better, I think. So. Um, yeah, I've got issues. <laughs> uh, I've got issues in my house right now. Uh, those are the lecture where uh, I've got a friend of mine uh, coming. Actually, Adam Blood is coming next week to uh, for Thanksgiving, and uh, we're going to deal with some of the things. But the thing is, I also look at it as an experience. Um, I've let some people into my house that I think have brought it in. And because of that, that's how it's got in. Um, I do have some spirits in my house for a while that I don't mind them being there. Um, there was one time I fell asleep during the afternoon on the bed. Something kept nudging me, nudging me. I get up, I go downstairs, and I left a pot of water boiling um, for hours in the pan. Was already, the water was gone, and it was red hot, and obviously it was going to catch on fire soon. So whatever it was woke me up to protect me. So I believe there are some spirits in the house that do that. We have this agreement. Had an agreement last week. I confronted some of them. I said, I know there's some bad spirits in the house. Here's the guidelines, blah, 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 to confirm that you agree with this. Uh, you used to open the cabinet door when one of my friends was living here. So I asked that you open one of the cabinet doors, which was almost impossible to open. And two days later, it was open. Um, so they realized what was going on. And then hopefully we'll be addressing this in a week. But I look at it as a research as well, because uh, we're going to find out what's there, you know, and deal with it then. So I run the ghost turf at this market, and for the first few years I did alone. I didn't have any help. Now it's grown, and I used to be at that mortuary almost every night. And I finished one Halloween season with a terrible sinus infection, and I went to doctor after doctor after doctor, and I couldn't get any relief. But then I found a medical intuitive who actually worked on pulling this spirit off of my head. And the next morning I woke up to just sinus junk all over my pillow. And I really believe that he, he took that off of me. It was actually attached to me. So. I need to go see that person. <laughs> I'm sick a lot. And I think a lot of that has to do with that. But does anybody that has spirits follow them home? Mark and Debbie Constantino. <laughs> well, excuse me, yeah, we do constantly, but we've always, I think we're kind of like Zach in that way that we were kind of, I, I at least was born into it. It's something I have a passion for too. If it wasn't there, I would be like, no, life ain't worth living. You know, it's like part of my life. You know, and yeah, does it get scary? Absolutely. Do I worry about my pets and my children? Absolutely, you do. But you kind of, you know, I agree with Chris in the sense that. You know, you thought creates everything. And if you believe in whatever good force you believe in, whatever you pray to, if you believe it's gonna work, it will. You know, but you have to believe it's more powerful. So. And I would just say at the present, um, we're not really dealing with it very, very well. But in spite of that, when we see something in the house, we just reach for a recorder. You know, it, it's just what we do. We're not even expecting <laughs> it. It's like, we don't even really think about it. We just, we have them in every room and we just reach for one. Um, we do need to, I think, figure out a, a better way to deal with what we have that's going on in the house. And a funny thing is, and you know, everybody's mentioning as far as you go to a place and then, you know, you have stuff following you home. What Debbie and I realize is that whatever we have going on in our house will really start amping up about three or four days before we're getting ready to do a location. Yeah. And it's almost like, okay, they know we're going. And are they coming from there and letting us know that, hey, we know you're coming because we'll get some really strange stuff that doesn't normally happen around the house just all of a, all of a sudden happen three days before we're doing conference. So it works both ways as far as stuff kind of following you home. And to a certain extent, when you do it all the time, I mean, not as much as, we don't do it as much as the guys do it, but you can't really help but have them follow you home once in a while. It's just, it's kind of part of what we do. And so you kind of take the good with the bad. So. Um, well, I had I had a lot of them growing up, and I used to think they were really terrifying, and I'd hide in the closet and do everything to avoid them. So as soon as I figured out how to send them on their merry way, I started doing it. I, I'd stick with uh, the ones that come home. I usually do the visualization where you put the tea candle on the table and picture them going up the tube of light on the other side. 
Um, I find it difficult to sleep with them in the house. But that's even the nice one. This, I don't like seeing the shadows cross back and forth. It's unnerving. <laughs> Okay, um, Tara, I got a question for you. When we did our event at Bobby Mackey's, remember when you heard it sounded like your little girl come through the shack hack? Did you, uh, how was it when you went home after Mackey's? The few times she's been at Mackey's, it's been weird when she got home. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dave. <laughs> probably I've been out of my house pretty hard. I've been like trying to figure it out. 
So yeah, my PX is always on, or like, I, gotta, I don't really do too much EVP all the time, but yeah, I do, uh, there's a lot of weird things happen, so I hunt it. <laughs> and you're not supposed to do that, by the way. Right. Right out there. Thank <laughs> <you>. Disclaimer. <laughs> all right, hey, and uh, before we totally wrap up, I just want to address one thing. Uh, about the attachments, I've been doing the events for five years, leading the events. We get maybe one, maybe two people that go home thinking they have an attachment. They'll contact me, we'll help them figure it out. It's just like preparing when you're gonna get in the car, you, you get the oil change, you put in gas, you take care of things, you're okay. A lot of the people up here, including myself, sometimes you get lazy and you forget to do the right things or the proper steps. Now guys like Zach and Aaron and Nick, they don't wanna protect themselves because then they're, you know, you put up that buffer of just intent Right? If a spirit wants to communicate, is he going to go to the three guys with the crucifixes on the holy water and, you know, so giving mixed signals, or are they going to go over to Mark and Debbie who are standing there going, hey, come on, home with us, right? So that's kind of the difference. I, I only say that because as they're telling you at the end of the freaking event, oh, yeah, we're all fucked at the end of these things. They're all going home with guests. Um, that's not the way it happens. But these guys are entrenched in it on a daily basis. Uh, if you've got any kind of religious background at all, just say a prayer before you go home. John Zaff is talking that, the demonologist. Uh, a couple of times we did investigations, I had things that, uh, that followed me. And he said, dude, I don't even go in my house. I have a prayer on my garage door. And it says, John, did you say your prayer? And then he says the prayer to remind himself, hey, you're not welcome here. Thank you very much for allowing me the time to visit, but you're not welcome. And uh, this is my world and my domain. And just because of that intent, I mean, the guy's a demonologist. You think he'd be getting mucked with the most, and he doesn't because he sets up parameters and boundaries. So that's what it's a lot about. So say your prayers, do what you want to do, try to clear yourself that way. If you go into it with fear and the intent that you're going to get screwed and something's going to stick to you, you're going to, it's going to hang out with you. That's what they like to do, right? But don't go in with that attitude. You should be just fine. Let's thank our guests. And uh, they're going to be wandering around in here for another half an hour with photographs, pictures, talking to you. Please don't dominate your time because everybody wants to say goodbye. But let's thank. We've got the lovely Mercedes Yager. Thank you very much. She'll be doing Ghost Walk again tonight. You guys that are going on the Ghost Walk meet out at the Gum Wall at 9 p.m. And you'll be off to go. And she says that they do have some umbrellas. All right. We've got Chris Fleming. And you can catch him coming up this November. He'll be on Psychic Kids. Two more episodes. And the season finale of The Haunted on the uh, uh, Animal Planet. Billy Tolley, EVP and Evidence Analyst Specialist. Thank you very much, Billy. Jeff Bellinger. Thank you very much, Jeff, the head writer of Ghost Adventures. Check out his website at ghostvillage.com for all the information. Do you have something in your hand that just puffed smoke above your head? Okay. But I was seeing a ghost all nice to this shit white up in the air. I'm like, and I'm Dave Schrader. Goodbye. <laughs> Mark and Debbie Constantino, EVP specialist. Thank you very much. Kelly Geddes, psychic extraordinaire. And ladies and gentlemen, your hosts, Aaron Goodwin and Zach Baggins. And the coolest dude in the world, the funniest dude in the world, one of the most intelligent guys in the paranormal field, Mr. Dave Schrader from Darkness Radio. This guy knows how to put on events. Remember, we've got the Queen Mary coming up in three weeks in Long Beach. We've got about 15 tickets that remain. It's going to be a great time, or we'll see you at the Stanley in March. You guys be safe. Come on up and say hi.